Hello everyone, it's Mrs Jennison here and I'm an Associate Director for Outwood Grange Academies Trust. Welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson we will be looking at building a reactivity series and the planning section of this project. This is part of our Mass Matters topic and it will use the knowledge in the previous lessons, for example conservation of mass, reactions producing gas, why they react differently and displacement to develop our own reactivity series for samples of metals. Our challenge is to be able to describe a method to compare the reactivity of metals and our aspire is to be able to explain how your results would show the reactivity of these metals. Now in today's lesson we will be planning an investigation. We will be investigating the reactivity of the following metals. Zinc, iron, copper, magnesium and aluminium. And following that investigation we will be placing those metals into an order of reactivity. The reactions we will be using are the reactions from our previous lessons in this topic. So we will be using displacement metals and acid, and thermal decomposition of carbonates. If you need to look back over the previous videos, the methods for these reactions were shown in those. Now, in the first reaction, the reaction of metals with acid, we will measure out 10 centimetres cubed of acid with a measuring cylinder and pour that into a test tube. We will then add a sample of metal and time how long it fizzes for and then repeat that for other metals. We may need to also note down any other observations that occurred during this reaction because some metals may fizz more vigorously than others. For example, a more reactive metal will fizz quickly and produce a lot of bubbles whereas a less reactive metal may fizz slowly or not produce any bubbles. So we need to note that observation as well as how long it fizzes for. So I'm going to ask you now to
So the independent variable would be the type of the metal as that is what we are changing in this investigation. We will be measuring how long the reaction fizzed for, but we will also be noting some other observations throughout those reactions. The control variables would be the volume of acid and as much as possible the mass of the metal being used. Our method would be to measure out 10 centimetre cubed of acid and pour that into our test tube, add approximately one gram of metal and time how long this reaction fizzes for, noting any other observations. And then repeat that for other metals. Once that in investigation is carried out, we will then carry out an investigation on the thermal decomposition of metal carbonates. And to do that, we'd have to set up a test tube in a retort stand as seen on the screen. If we add our sample of carbonate to that test tube, and then connect it using the delivery tube into another test tube which contains lime water. Then we would heat that carbonate and time how long it takes for the lime water to turn cloudy and repeat for other metal carbonates. Now a more reactive metal will not decompose a less reactive metal will decompose quickly and that means the lime water will turn cloudy quickly. So again So your independent variable is the type of the metal in the carbonate. The dependent variable, what you'll measure, is how long it takes for the lime water to turn cloudy. The control variables, you'll need to use the same volume of lime water and where possible, the same mass of metal carbonate. The method will be to measure out of suggested three grams of carbonate and Pour that into a test tube, add 10 centimetres cubed of lime water to the other test tube and then connect them with the delivery tube. Heat the carbonate and time how long it takes for the lime water to turn cloudy. 
note any of other observations. I've just said that because there may be some colour changes as well. And to repeat that for other metal carbonates. Now, the final reaction we will carry out is called displacement. To do that, we will use a piece of equipment called a spotting tile. And in that spotting tile, we're going to use a pipette to add solutions with different metals in them. And each solution we will place into a column in that spotting tile. And once we've done that, we can then add samples of metals to each of those solutions and simply note down whether there is a colour change to the metal or to the solution. That would indicate displacement has occurred. And we will repeat it to make sure that all the metals and solutions, all the different combinations have been tested so that we can use that to then rank those metals with the other data we've collected in terms of their reactivity. So I'd like you to again just summarise. So the independent variable, this one's a little bit tricky because we're changing two things technically because we're changing the type of the metal and we're also changing the metal compound in the solution. So if you just had type of metal, that's fair, um, but we are sort of carrying out more than one investigation simultaneously. The dependent variable is simply whether displacement has occurred and we'll just be noting whether a reaction's taken place or not. Now our control variables, it's gonna be quite difficult to control. Your technicians will probably mix these up for you, but we want to use similar concentrations of the metal compound solutions. And um, we're gonna be using similar size pieces of the actual metal. However, because this isn't a quantitative reaction, we're not getting a number out of it. The control variables aren't as stringent as they were in the previous investigations. So we are just simply saying whether a reaction is happening or not in this practical. So the method is to add a few drops of solution into each dimple of the spotting tile. I've called it solution A at the moment because we're not sure which solutions you'll have. 
depends on what your school has in stock. Add a small sample of each metal, note whether a reaction has occurred and then repeat for other solutions. Now the final thing for you to do is to consider your safety during these investigations. And I'd like you to explain how you will stay safe during these practicals. And bear in mind the different things you are using, such as Bunsen burners, you're using acid. So how can you stay safe? Now, remember, when we are asking you to explain. So you should have something such as wearing goggles to protect your eyes from the acid and solutions, especially because the acid is corrosive and some of the solutions may be irritants. You should have things like tying your hair back when you're using the Bunsen burner so that it doesn't set on fire and allow all of your equipment to cool before packing away so that you don't burn yourself. In the next video, I will provide you with some results from these experiments and some short video clips that show some of the experiments being carried out. Then you will be able to use those results and observations to rank the metals in order of reactivity. So that is everything for me in this video and I will see you all soon.